Welcome to another video on Microsoft Rewards where you'll be able to earn points to redeem for gift cards, subscriptions, and more. We are not going to go through the basics here since uh, we already talked about that in the first video of the series. So if you haven't seen that yet, then I highly recommend you check that out after you see this video. And you can always find more information in the link in the description under the like and subscribe button. Let's uh, start with a quick tip. If you already registered with Microsoft Rewards, you should be receiving email notifications just like this one. And sometimes you can find more opportunities to earn points in those emails. But I would say that 75% of the points in the email notifications can be found on the rewards dashboards. But uh, there have been times when I'm able to earn more points and free sweepstake vouchers in those emails. So be sure to check them regularly. This is also a great way to get points uh, that you might have previously missed. And let's face it, we all forget to check our rewards dashboard from time to time. And I normally can get an easy 100 points from these emails a month. And nothing special, but uh, I just want to get it out there. In this video, we're going to focus on another way to earn points with Microsoft Rewards. We are going to take a deep dive into the Microsoft Rewards Family Program. This is a free service used to filter content and add time limits to people in your family group. But uh, it does many other things as well, like uh, you can share Microsoft Office with people in your family, uh, set calendar reminders, or add spending limits. But uh, what we're here for is its ability to share Microsoft Reward Points with each member. Once you are registered and in your rewards dashboard, you can access the family group in two ways. You can go to the community tab or the family tab up here. The family tab does have more information than the community tab and it's the one that you want to go to if you want to make all the adjustments to your family group. The community tab is just a brief overview of your family group, but more on that in a second. Let's head on over to the family tab first. And you can see there's a bunch of information here and feel free to browse around at your leisure but we're gonna go directly into the process of creating a group. And you wanna first click on the Create button here, and a pop-up will appear, and it's gonna ask you to add a member either by entering their number or their email, and then hit Next. Now it's gonna ask you to assign the member a role. You can make them an organizer or a member. And organizers can make admin changes like privileges for members in your family group. And members can only edit their own settings depending on what privileges the organizer allows for the user. One note though, to give a member a organizer role, the member needs to be 18 or older. Depending on how you invite the member, they can receive a text message or an email notification like this one to accept the invite. But once you're done inviting your members, it's going to take you to the family groups dashboard. And once your family member accepts the invitation, you can press the accept invite link and they'll be part of the family. Once again, you can browse around the family dashboard to get familiar with it and check out all its features. But uh, what we're going to do is head back over to our rewards dashboard. And then we'll go over to the community tab. Now you'll be able to see all your family members on a leaderboard. And it will show you how many points they've earned this month, what points they have available, and their lifetime points. This is assuming that they have points, but if they don't, then you need to get them onto Microsoft Rewards. Even if they don't really care about it, at least get them to help you out. I mean, every little bit counts, you know? Anyway, you have three options in the community tab. You can add new members directly from here, and you can give points, and you can ask for points. Family members who are level 1 can only donate 1,000 points per month, and level 2 can donate 5,000 points per month. All members may request up to 10,000 points, and requests expire after 90 days. So one thing that Microsoft doesn't clearly state, and you won't notice unless you actually use the feature, is that regardless of how many points you request, you can only receive 5,000 points per month. So let's say you request 10,000 points, but somebody has already given you 5,000 for the month. So you still need another 5,000 to complete your quota. Well, guess what? No one else will be able to give you 5,000 points until the following month to complete your quota. And if they do try to give you points, then they'll see this. So there is kind of like a hack that's been going around lately, and I do want to address it a little bit, but uh, you might be thinking, what if I create multiple rewards accounts and I'll do rewards on all of them and I'll just donate the points to myself? And I don't advise you to do this because it could get your account banned. And I haven't found direct literature on the service agreement that specifically states this, but there is wording in there that doing so may lead Microsoft to ban your account, so use it at your own risk. Regardless, using the family group can gain you an extra 5,000 points per month above the normal ways that we talked about in the first video. And this can really help you speed up the reward process. So if you total up the points from the previous video with the points from the family group that we got today, we are looking at roughly 14,000 points per month. 
But generally, what my family and I do is throughout the year, we'll decide on what each one of us needs and we'll donate points to each other to reach that goal. And if we don't have enough points at the time, then we'll give the next person in line priority for donations. And for the most part, it's usually gift cards and Xbox subscriptions. I was planning to add more ways to earn points in this video like I did in the first video, but uh, people didn't seem to appreciate that length so much. So I decided to break the series down into smaller parts so you'll get more videos but with shorter lengths in this series. Attention span seems to be an issue in our society, but then again, I do digress. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I would appreciate you hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you know when the next video gets released. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.